uh, before we speak about uh, the Gandhian cardinal, cardinal virtues, I would just like to put forth an, uh, a little thought experiment uh, for you. Now, suppose you are going to buy any item in a, in a market, right? Um, let us say, let us say it is a phone, let us say it is a mobile phone. What are the factors that you would consider while buying a mobile phone? And what are the factors that you would not consider? Now, this seems to be quite a, 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 a intuitively answered question, but what uh, I raise this question to bring in the uh, Gandhian notion of ethics uh, in economics and in daily life in commerce uh, about uh, uh, how we take decisions. So, what do we, uh, what would you consider, what would you uh, uh, value uh, while purchasing a mobile phone? Would you value the facilities it have, it has, the facilities you require, the uh, uh, brand image of the uh, manufacturer, the reliability of the manufacturer, the review, the warranty period, the guarantee period, the price of course, and the value for money that you are getting. Apart from these, which perhaps many of us would uh, value, if not all, at least some of them, apart from the fact that how it looks. Apart from these, would you value whether the employer, or whether, whether the brand, or the company manufacturing the mobile phone, is an equal opportunity provider? Whether it uses uh, 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 child labour, or uh, forced labour, or not? Whether it, it is, uh, it uh, uh, indulges in uh, corporate social responsibility, or not? whether it, uh, whether the seller is given, uh, 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 or the distributor, or the reseller is given an adequate share. What are the terms and conditions, and how are the working environment of the workers. Now, one standard answer to the way we go about this today, is that well, uh, these things do not, or should not concern us. Uh, our commercial decisions are very factual decisions, which regard to our usage of it. Uh, we we uh, need not look at the big picture, but look at the small picture that well, as long as the product suits us, and we can afford it, we should make a buy. There makes, uh, there is no difference about it. What if I have one mobile phone, and I require another one? Well, if I can afford it, I should buy it. What if I have two, and I want another one? What if I uh, would like to replace uh, the one that I have, with the uh, newer model that comes in? If I can afford it, I should be doing it, or and if I can afford it, and I want to do it, there is no reason why I should not do it. Well, here is where uh, Gandhian ethics uh, comes in. Uh, Gandhian ethics comes in here, that well, uh, when we talk about it in detail, that well, Gandhi's world view, is that, there is uh, no sharp distinction between commerce and uh, ethics, and ethics is a part of the way we go about uh, our lives. And uh, there are various factors that should, or that ought to be uh, considered. So, just an affordance level does not uh, guarantee a uh, uh, normative decision. Let us look at this as an example, perhaps discussed earlier too. Uh, say, in, in a uh, water uh, starved uh, city, we have people queuing up for drinking water. And, in the same city, a plush uh, uh, hotel can afford better uh, water in its flush tanks, and bath tubs. And so, people uh, are uh, at one end of the city, are uh, have to fend for a limited supply of uh, portable water, and thereof it is expensive or they have to pay for it. And at the other end, they have, uh, because they can pay for it, they have uh, unregulated, or uh, a lot of access to, and, uh, uh, to, to water in a water scarce, uh, water scarce environment. Now, it is here, that when we tend to think, that commercial or financial ability, gives us uh, normative justification, to purchase, or, or to acquire, or to use resources. It is here, that 
uh, Gandhi would disagree that well, your financial ability may give you uh, 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 the uh, minimum essential to for the utilization of resources, but that does not wholly determine the justification for the use of a resource. Well, let this question play about in your mind, and uh, with these little thought experiment that what would you consider uh, as uh, uh, as, as the Gandhian means uh, of, or how would you assess the Gandhian way of working. Uh, you can uh, 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 extrapolate it into various aspects of life, say uh, uh, on, on a busy uh, city road, uh, a car occupying say uh, x meter cube of space, uh, carrying one person and a bus occupying uh, 3 x meter cube of space. Uh, carrying 30 people. Now, what should be given, uh, who should be given preference over the other? What sense does it make? The simple fact that well, if there are more number of people, should that be given a preference or because I can afford a, a car, I can uh, join the traffic and uh, because I can afford a car and the fuel uh, for it, I can uh, actually use it and uh, uh, the rest of the factors are irrelevant. Anyway, let this little uh, thought experiment play in your uh, uh, um, uh, mind, and let us now quickly look at what are the Gandhian uh, the cardinal virtues of Gandhian ethics. Now, if you look at the screen, uh, you see the, well, these are fairly straight jacketed uh, cardinal virtues taken out of uh, uh, directly out of the Indian tradition. So, um, Gandhi's uh, addition is uh, only to uh, one or two more virtues. Well, Gandhi, as we see, is a uh, Gandhi's traditional virtues are contigu uh, contiguous with traditional Indian virtues, and like all Indian philosophical schools, with the exception of Charvaka, the moral law is held as universal, and that the nature of the world is moral. That is, the world is not an amoral place. The world is not an aggregate of facts. It's not a congregation of facts, and virtues are to be practiced in thought, word, and de deed, and there was uh, of course, Gandhi's stress on authenticity, that uh, thought and word is not enough, and it has to be practiced in, in our intentions, motives and deed. Well, the first virtue is Ahimsa or non-violence. This is regarded as the most important virtue, most important virtue and it is based on tolerance and love. Gandhi brings in God, a belief in God as a part of his world view, and for uh, him, God realization uh, for God realization, love for every being is necessary. Other virtues can be practiced only after ahimsa is followed. Satya or truth, truth is conceived as God, an individual's access to truth is obstructed by the various uh, obstacles, lust, anger, greed, infatuation, pride and falsehood. Gandhi is aware that falsehood may pay off better than truth, but truth is superior because even falsehood that pays off better, does so only because it uh, claims to be the truth for that period of time. So, even fault the very fact that falsehood works is worse because it's in the garb of truth. Aste or non-stealing, not possessing the property that does not rightfully belong to one. More strictly, not possessing property that one does not need. In this is influence uh, from the Jain tradition, where property is seen as the outer life of an individual, and any violation of the same is a violation of an individual or himsa. Now, you, we can perhaps just take a look at this uh, slide, and uh, understand that well, uh, Gandhi does not come up with a strict communi uh, communistic uh, uh, outlook. Uh, Gandhi respects property, and property uh, following the Jain tradition that well, the property is the incarnation of our external life, and therefore, uh, uh, snatching away property, or not handling property properly, is also a, an act of violence or hinsa against uh, somebody. So, property that way, uh, Gandhi is not a radical as a communist, that would say that well, property is, all property is theft, or that property is wicked, and that needs to be uh, snatched away from those in excess of it. So, definitely we see, a, uh, if you look at the slide, a not a non-communistic reading of uh, uh, Gandhi clearly evident, when uh, we talk about Astya or non-stealing, because it does not 
justify forceful distribution or redistribution of property. All property is definitely not theft, and property is not is a, property is an expression of an individual's external life. Therefore, due care has to be allotted to it. Aparigraha or non-acceptance, the tendency to possess things, is an evil, according to Gandhi. Now, aparigraha or non-acceptance means well, abs not that there should be no possession at all, but we should have possessions that are our bare essentials. This is the foundation for universal love. The tendency to possess things is an evil, according to Gandhi. Now, let us look at it this way, in the um, contemporary uh, world uh, sense. Now, if we see, uh, there are various, uh, what, uh, what are the uh, broad uh, driving principles of uh, uh, the world economic order. If I, uh, if it is understood that there has to be an uh, ever rising demand to fuel an ever rising supply, and that in in can, in in, in uh, case fuels or requires an uh, ever increasing uh, manufacturing or production, and that leads to an ever increasing requirement for labor and labor re reward. So this becomes an escalating scale, which brings about uh, flourishment, which perhaps roughly speaking. To uh, can be translated as an economy in a boom phase. Now, this would be perhaps uh, uh, the ideal uh, to take place. Now, Gandhi when he talks about uh, aparigraha or non-acceptance or strictly as uh, possessing uh, uh, items as much as required, is well that we need not keep on in increasing our requirements, and thereof causing a uh, spin out in the increase in supply and consequence in production and thereof. That, that is not a world order that Gandhi would support. Gandhi would support that, well, yes we need things for our existence, and things are uh, the shell of our external life, but this shell or these things should not take over our life. And therefore, if I have a mobile phone that works fairly, this constant uh, 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 need for updating into newer and more latest, more attractive versions, without any strict uh, increase in utility, or without any significant increase in utility, is again what Gandhi uh, would uh, warn us as um, things taking over people, rather than people using things. We can get very clear examples of these things. Now, look at it this way. Everywhere, we, we are beamed into with the advertisements, and, cha and advertising channels, and new kinds of products, that are trying to create a demand in us. So, uh, as uh, the eternal statement, or, or the, the uh, eternally famous statement of Gandhi goes, that nature creates enough for man's need, but not for man's greed. So, when we have uh, enough for uh, our existence, it is for individuals themselves to put a uh, stop, or a pause, or a slow down on their requirements, instead of letting it escalate, uh, without any uh, uh, limits. So, up, uh, when, when we talk about this cardinal virtue of aparigraha, or non-acceptance, uh, Gandhi is very clear about it, as mentioned in the slide, that the tendency to possess things, is an evil, according to Gandhi, especially when it goes out of control. Absolute, uh, of course, Gandhi is no, not naive in this sense, claiming that uh, an absolute discarding of all, enti of all possessions, but says that, well, absolute non-possession is definitely not feasible. So, one ought to possess only the bare essentials. Now, imagine, uh, if we are uh, uh, only possessing the bare essentials, or that what we uh, require as bare essential, we bring about a kind of sense of simplicity. And that, according to Gandhi, will bring about the foundation for universal love. The next uh, 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 cardinal virtue that Gandhi talks about, is Brahmacharya, or celibacy. Now, popularly, Brahmacharya can be understood as abstinence from sex, but Gandhi understands it as both control over the sexual urge, in particular, but also a control and restraint over the senses and mind. So, Brahmacharya would, uh, according to Gandhi, put forth that, well, it is a general regulation of desires, to not let the desires, 
take over uh, human decision making rather the desires uh, should be in line with decision uh, uh, with the human agency. Now, this the, the, the virtues that we talked about till now were the virtues that are contiguous with the Indian tradition. Now, these are the virtues that Gandhi adds as cardinal virtues, when he talks about Abhaya or fearlessness. For um, Abhaya is or uh, fearlessness is a virtue, because cowards can never be morality, uh, can never be moral. For morality requires the courage to overcome the fear of shame, hunger and pain. If uh, one does take the path of morality, it is bound to uh, land one in trouble as uh, uh, many uh, uh, proponents of free software have also uh, said that well uh, freedom is not free we have to pay price for following the moral uh, path so if if we are trying to do something morally right it is going to land us into some inconvenient circumstances and th to face these inconvenient circumstances uh, courage is a must and finally uh, Gandhi talks about faith in God, that all the prior mentioned virtues can be found on, uh, founded on faith in the ultimate goodness of God. So, based on the belief that ultimate nature of the world is moral. So, the corner stone or key edict again comes out to be faith in the goodness of God or in the moral nature of the world. So, this is not necessarily a, a belief in theistic nature, but that the order of the world is not uh, amoral, that there is a moral nature of the world, that morality is not a creation of human mind, that it is the very nature of the world uh, we live in. So, when uh, to understand Gandhi's God, we need to be open, we need, we need not be a theist or an atheist uh, uh, is, uh, or it is not that an atheist is uh, inaccessible to Gandhi's version of God, but when we talk about Gandhi's notion of uh, moral no nature of the world is that foundationally the world nature is a uh, the world uh, has a moral quality, and it is not a quality that is superimposed by uh, us human beings. So it is uh, talks about the moral nature of the world. Now, looking at the next uh, slide, which uh, is very very uh, crucial, which is almost handed over to one of Gandhi's friend by Gandhi on a chit on a piece of paper. Gandhi talks about seven social sins. Well, politics without principles, wealth without work, pleasure without conscience, knowledge without character, commerce without morality, science without humanity, and worship without sacrifice. Now, I would just. Uh, uh, take this particular aspect, when we talk about wealth without work and commerce without morality. Now, when we look at, uh, here is where I would bring forth that, well for uh, uh, Gandhi, the crucial aspect of uh, uh, living is morality or ethics itself. So, as you could see from the seven social sins that uh, uh, Gandhi warns us against, all of them deal with different uh, uh, facets of life, say politics, say commerce, say science, say knowledge but are all ultimately tied up with uh, value terms, be it character, be it principles, be it morality, be it uh, uh, all those mentioned as uh, uh, essential requirements for the, uh, uh, for the former to progress. Now, I will today, uh, I will now concentrate only on these two fundamental claims that well commerce without morality and wealth without work. Now, Gandhi talks about something called the bread labour.
Well, what is meant by the bread labor? Well, bread labor is that well, simply put that man must or human beings should work for their living. That uh, whatever bread we have, comes out of the product of our labor. Now, this is a very uh, uh, simple, but a profound claim, because well, what it negates, is that when we create, when we acquire, or when we possess, or create wealth, without any work. So, this perhaps brings in, uh, Gandhi's uh, insistence is further, by work, he only meant physical work. So, it was necessary for us to do, some physical work to earn our bread. And it was not, uh, just. Uh, so, so, you can take it as uh, a critique of uh, wealth, that is earned as uh, interest. That is, uh, uh, in fact, the Gandhian way of uh, living is far away from the way we know the world uh, today. Because, uh, uh, interest is no more taken, at, uh, no more taken as a, a sin, or as a uh, undeserved fruit, that we get out of labour. So, uh, by bread labour, Gandhi insists, that we have to work for our living, or we have to work for our living, and it should not be without any work. Gandhi brings in about, when we talks about commerce without morality. When we talked about this example, of uh, purchasing a mobile phone, what matters. Well, what would matter to, uh, it is a commercial transaction, where is the morality aspect in it. Now, we are, uh, we uh, perhaps, uh, tend to uh, classify, uh, in the human notion, as the world difference between facts and values, and commerce deals with the world of facts, and values have nothing to do with it. Now, Gandhi is a strict critique of such a world view there, where uh, values are divorced from facts. That well, where commerce is divorced from values. That well, uh, values are to be the core of decisions, uh, and facts only inform the circumstances of the decision. Uh, so, whenever there is commerce, uh, it cannot be in isolation of morality. So, it starts by talking about bread labour. That well, we should have. Uh, 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 we should have uh, to work for our living. Well, a lot of concepts of Gandhi are tied around these uh, uh, ethical concepts are tied around uh, the, these notions like Sarvodaya and Swadeshi, and uh, uh, so on and so forth. But let's just quickly take a look at what is uh, Gandhian ethics when they talk, what is or what kind of a ethical world that Gandhi imagines. First, Gandhi imagines the world totally as an ethical world, that every decision is a moral decision. It is, uh, we cannot divorce uh, uh, the world of facts, from the world of values. Now, uh, the ontological belief of this, comes from uh, the fact, that uh, uh, from, not from, from the uh, belief, that uh, Gandhi had acquired from Isha Upanishad, which stated that well, all property, or all material objects in this world, belong to God, and we are mere users of the same. Now, this also brings forth, the notion of trusteeship, which we will talk about in a few moments from now. So, well, what Gandhi insists, if you look in the slide, is that, well, sense of possession, or sense of possessing material objects, is erroneous. So, that we never really possess material objects, we are users of material objects at the most, and it is possessed by uh, God, according to Gandhi. Now, this sense of, if this is kept on in our mind, that we do not actually possess objects, but we are are we, we are the keepers of material objects, our outlook to the world changes a lot. Now, uh, Gandhi was uh, limiting the use of technology. Now, that seems to be quite a contentious 
point that we are coming across, when we talk about that well, Gandhi is uh, talking about limiting the use of technology and uh, machinery and so. Now, this would perhaps be counter intuitive to most of us from today's perspective, that well technology is a good thing and we must have it as much as possible. Well, what uh, Gandhi meant by this is that well first, there are many problems with the use of technology and machinery. First, technology and machinery trends to bring about uh, uh, cities and cities are not a very, uh, cities bring about anonymity and therefore, a distance between uh, people. Uh, cities, according to Gandhi, are, is not a happy place to be. In fact, Gandhi critiques this whole notion of modernity, which is bound on the industrial civilization and the evolution of urban uh, centers of living. So, the urban centers of living are, do not turn out to be a happy place to be. Uh, industrialization, rampant industrialization causes uh, uh, alienation or causes uh, uh, labor to be distanced from uh, the whole process of creating a single entity and we become specialized workers. This is in common strain with how even uh, the communists would argue against the industrial uh, culture. Technology or having too much of, uh, Gandhi is definitely not against uh, machinery or the usage of machinery, but what he is against is that getting obsessed with the use of uh, machinery. So, uh, when we have a wheel how much better can you make a wheel? So, when you have uh, uh, discovered the shape for a wheel, how much better can you make it? So, Gandhi's uh, outlook is that, well, machinery should be uh, designed, developed, used only to fulfill the necessities of human beings. It should not go ahead in uh, us requiring constantly uh, new machines to intrigue us. Now, look at it this way, this makes a lot of relevance, if you place this context in the notion of say, the computer uh, uh, industry today. That well, a lot of uh, uh, addition or evolution or newness that is coming into the software and the hardware is uh, simply put unnecessary. It is simply put to keep each uh, 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 each machine or each software uh, to be a little more advanced than the former version and to keep this chain continuing. So, to have an aggressive uh, uh, upscaling to enhance market to have the latest uh, gadget and information keep coming on. So, this in turn if you would see a whole generation of people are uh, look forward to the release of a new piece of machinery or a new uh, software and uh, continue with it. So, it no more is that machine playing a role of utility in that individual's life, but rather the individual seeks his fulfillment or purpose in uh, acquiring the latest uh, uh, piece of machinery or software that comes out to be. Now, this is prevalent amongst us that uh, uh, we all look for the latest uh, version of the hardware or software that comes out to be, but is the latest version really uh, a required version? Did not the earlier version do its job properly? Are all uh, uh, revisions necessary or these are commercial decisions to phase out the older ones and uh, bring out uh, newer ones, which may not be necessary at all, but which are necessary to uh, make the computer industry thrive or be on the boom path as so mentioned. So, Gandhi cautions us against this obsession with machinery, that we continuously look for uh, uh, newer machinery and machinery takes over our life or technology takes over our life, where we are constantly looking for something new and utility goes uh, back, which was the primary motive of technology, utility takes a back seat. So, that I think is a very interesting uh, 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 caution that we can uh, import from Gandhian uh, uh, world view to how uh, we are today. So, limiting the use of technology according to Gandhi is a, uh, a requirement. Now, Gandhi he, was, he did not abhor machineries, rather he wanted to use machineries, uh, to limit the craze for machineries and uh, he was uh, against the indiscriminate expansion and use of machineries. 
Now, let me talk about uh, what Gandhi means by trusteeship. We just talked about trusteeship some time back. Well, according to Gandhi and Gandhi's uh, uh, relation with the capitalists of the, uh, uh, of his times was quite good. In fact, he uh, was able to get a lot of willing uh, voluntary donations from the capitalists of those times. And Gandhi has known to have had good relations with the uh, capitalist families of uh, India at that time. Well, one thing that we need to learn about Gandhi is, Gandhi does not demonize the capitalist or does not demonize the uh, wealthy person or wealth. In fact, uh, there is a stark difference between the uh, communistic or outlook and of the Gandhian outlook, where uh, Gandhi does not demonize uh, the, the capitalist at all. Instead, the Gandhi, re, re, uh, Gandhi recognizes the capitalist as a trustee, as uh, a trustee of wealth. Now, if again, going back that well, if all uh, the sense of possession, if that is loosened, and we see ourselves as trustees of our wealth, uh, because this wealth or this possessions or material possessions that are with us, are not going to stay with us, simply because we are not going to stay forever. So, for the time we live, we have these uh, uh, material things with us, and we are mere trustees of these simple th uh, of these material things. It's a very simple, commonsensical truth, which is perhaps evident if one uh, takes a very uh, 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 simple, uh, naive look to life. That well, uh, we're not uh, we are having finite lives, and therefore. Uh, what we own, is own, owning only during the duration of our life. So, we are not owning, in a way, uh, anything that way. So, Gandhi goes ahead, and has put forth this notion of trusteeship, where the wealthy, as long as wealth is created, he is, has no problem with it. But, as long as the sense of possession, or the lack of aparigraha, uh, comes uh, with this uh, creation of wealth, that is where the problem is. So, the wealthy are simply the trustees of their wealth, and their wealth they have to decide on which best platform it should go on to. So, trusteeship by trusteeship, it means that well, the rich are only the trustees of their wealth. not the possessors. Of their wealth. So, if this outlook is uh, brought about, in, in uh, uh, the, the, the wealthy, then trusteeship, the notion of trusteeship comes out to be, uh, or the, the wealthy uh, are mere trustees of their wealth. And therefore, uh, the sense of giving and usage is much better than what uh, we find in uh, a possessive material greed. In fact, there have been uh, a lot of instances of uh, and uh, 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 corporations which have grown, acquired wealth, and then gone ahead, gone ahead with philanthropy. So this is what comes out, uh, uh, perhaps, which uh, makes true Gandhian claim that well. After a certain point, which is uh, for the use of one's own bare necessities, uh, wealth is just a uh, trusted upon to the wealthy, and for for its uh, effective utilization. So we find enormous foundations of these wealthy corporations coming up, trying to uh, distribute wealth. But well, Gandhi paints a very optimistic picture of life, and at every moment, or a optimistic hope, or optimistic uh, uh, version of. Uh, human existence. And, uh, the cynic, or the critic sitting at uh, every moment, would uh, denounce it at every stage as impractical, or uh, not feasible. But, well, we will not take that question now. But, what we need to understand is, the Gandhian way of living. Now, now we will go ahead and talk with another uh, notion, or very uh, 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 another ethical notion of Gandhi, which has affected 
uh, in fact, the history of the world, which is the notion of Satyagraha.